Welcome to the Peerview Press Cardiology CME podcast series. The following program contains audio excerpts from interviews with Drs. Deepak L. Bhatt, Stephen Steinhubel, and Stephen Wiviot. These excerpts are part of a CME activity entitled Limitations of Current Antiplatelet Therapy with PCI, Focus on Novel Therapies in Development. To access the entire program, including slides, and to complete the CME post-test, please go online to www.peerviewpress.com forward slash R291. Additionally, please view the PDF file that is part of this podcast feed for complete CME information. Oral antiplatelet therapies support the use of stenting with percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI. These agents are prescribed before PCI to improve early 30-day outcomes by preventing thrombotic complications at the site of intervention, says Dr. Deepak L. Bhatt. In addition, extended antiplatelet therapies after PCI are used to reduce the rate of long-term thrombotic complications. Dr. Bhatt discusses the clinical support for the use of these agents in acute coronary syndromes necessitating PCI with stenting. Currently, oral Antiplatelet therapy after stenting consists of aspirin and clopidogrel. These are the mainstays of oral antiplatelet therapy, and every patient, barring an allergy or contraindication, gets these after stent implantation. Aspirin, of course, is used forever in patients with coronary artery disease, specifically in those receiving stents. Clopidogrel, at least the current guidelines would suggest, ought to be used up to a year at least after coronary stent implantation. Both aspirin and clopidogrel work via antagonizing platelet action, but they work in slightly different ways. Aspirin essentially keeps the platelet from working via pathways mediated by cyclooxygenase, so it's a cyclooxygenase inhibitor. The way that clopidogrel works is quite distinct. It is an ADP or adenosine diphosphate receptor antagonist and its active metabolite binds to that receptor and thereby inactivates the platelet for the lifespan of the platelet. So ADP receptor blockade and aspirin are two complementary approaches to platelet inhibition. Dr. Bott describes the volume of clinical data supporting the use of aspirin in acute coronary syndromes necessitating PCI. The evidence supporting aspirin for PCI is quite large. The data for aspirin extends beyond just balloon angioplasty to stent implantation, but more generally just to patients with coronary artery disease, especially in those who've had thrombotic events, say acute coronary syndromes or acute myocardial infarction. In MI with ST segment elevation, ISIS-2 investigators found that five-week vascular mortality was significantly reduced in patients treated with daily aspirin, and consequently, the agent's immediate use is recommended in all STEMI patients. In addition, in patients sustaining an MI without ST segment elevation, the large meta-analysis by the Antithrombotic Trilis Collaboration advocates the use of aspirin with or without PCI to reduce the risk of future major vascular events. The concomitant use of ticlopidine or clopidogrel with aspirin before and after PCI is supported by a large volume of clinical data. Dr. Bott describes the rationale for the preferred use of clopidogrel in this clinical context. Clopidogrel, which is a cyanopyridine, has a great deal of data supporting its use, in particular in acute coronary syndromes. And in fact, its predecessor, ticlopidine, actually had a wealth of data also supporting its use in a variety of indications. Now, in terms of safety, ticlopidine had some disadvantages. It was associated with a low rate of neutropenia and a much lower rate, but much more worrisome potential complication of TTP or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. For those reasons, clopidogrel ultimately supplanted ticlopidine for all indications where ticlopidine had been used, but in particular in patients who'd received stent implantation. The use of dual antiplatelet therapy, aspirin plus clopidogrel, in acute coronary syndromes necessitating PCI was first validated in a sub-study of the CURE trial. More than 2,500 patients with non-ST segment elevation acute coronary syndrome received aspirin plus randomly assigned placebo or clopidogrel before PCI. Open-label dual antiplatelet therapy was administered for one month following PCI, after which the study drug was reinitiated for a mean of eight months. 
The 30-day and 1-year data show that dual antiplatelet therapy significantly reduced major cardiovascular events. The CURE study really validated that approach with clopidogrel plus aspirin, showing it to be superior to aspirin plus placebo in patients with unstable angina or non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. Moreover, the length of the PCI CURE study enabled the assessment of extended dual antiplatelet therapy for up to one year, data which informed the updated 2007 advisory guidelines from the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, and the Society for Cardiovascular Angiography and Interventions. The trial was a one-year trial, and throughout that study period, it appeared that dual antiplatelet therapy was superior to aspirin alone. And that's what led to the guideline recommendation of using dual antiplatelet therapy. Subsequent data confirmed the benefit of dual antiplatelet therapy before PCI in ST-segment elevation MI, as well as in cases of elective PCI. One meta-analysis assessing this issue was reported by Sabatine and colleagues. Individual trial and meta-analysis results confirmed the benefit of pretreatment and continued therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel to reduce the risk of major vascular events during the first 30 days after coronary intervention. The CREDO trial, in particular, highlighted the trend toward a favorable effect with clopidogrel when given at least six hours before PCI. These clinical data support the recently published advisory update regarding the use of antiplatelet therapy in PCI. The updated advisory stresses the benefit of dual antiplatelet therapy both as pretreatment and as extended therapy after coronary intervention. After PCI, the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy depends on the type of stent placed. For example, when drug-eluting stents are placed, the updated advisory recommends at least 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel. The guidelines didn't go so far as to endorse beyond a year But that's because guidelines, of course, have to stick with what the randomized clinical trial data support. So as far as the guidelines say, a year of dual antiplatelet therapy is what's recommended. In point of fact, though, many interventional cardiologists, in particular with drug-eluting stents and complex drug-eluting stents, are going beyond that one-year recommendation in patients who are at low bleeding risk. Maintenance dual antiplatelet therapy is also recommended in patients who have undergone brachytherapy unless the bleeding risk is high. And finally, the possibility of clopidogrel resistance may warrant platelet aggregation studies in certain cases. Dual antiplatelet therapy has been completely validated in the setting of acute coronary syndromes. By that, I mean unstable angina, non-ST segment elevation MI, and more recently also ST segment elevation MI. Also, it has a very prominent role in patients who receive percutaneous coronary intervention, whether that's balloon angioplasty, bare metal stent implantation, or drug-eluting stent implantation. The guidelines strongly support the use of dual antiplatelet therapy in ACS and in PCI for up to one year. Newer data continue to come out regarding drug-eluting stents and what the role of dual antiplatelet therapy might be even beyond a year. Although clopidogrel is an integral part of antiplatelet therapy supporting PCI, its use has limitations, specifically in cases requiring a rapid onset of antiplatelet activity shortly before PCI, and in cases that may require a shorter duration of antiplatelet activity because of imminent surgery. Antiplatelet agents in development are intended to address these limitations. Beyond just the world of aspirin and clopidogrel with respect to oral antiplatelet therapy. There are a number of other novel antiplatelet agents, both oral and intravenous, that are being studied that will potentially validate the concept of more being better. Greater degrees of platelet inhibition might further reduce ischemic events, though, of course, ongoing studies will need to evaluate whether they also increase bleeding or whether the bleeding trade-off is acceptable. This has been a CME-certified activity, joint